We're going to start working on the rest of the jet. And so what you have in here is I've taken the nose section off and it's sitting right here. And this exposes a bunch of wiring. Um, and so what I'd like to do is take out the tanks. You can see that they are held by Velcro and that's, that's what this is. So I'm gonna undo the Velcro and then get the tanks out, inspect the clunks, make sure everything is done correctly. Already I can see these spots here are not wire wrapped, so I might wire wrap them. And the way this fuel tank is set up is, um, it looks like uh, one of these is going to be the vent, probably this, and this is what's going to go to the to the UAT. So it seems as though this is wired in such a way that the tank that's on the right, which is your left, empties to the th tank that's on the left, which is the right right on the, on the camera, and then from there to the UAT. And, and I think that's probably fine because the tanks are so close to the center, it's not really going to affect the weight distribution mark. So the tanks are out of the plane and uh, when I take a look at this there's a few things that I don't like. Uh, well first of all these have not been wire wrapped or wrapped at all and whereas they seem like they're gonna be stiff it just it, it's a little bit sketchy for me so I'm gonna have to wire up those. Um, so these tanks look like they are 1500 cc's each, I don't think you can see that. So that's a 3 liter combined fuel um, on the jet. Uh, to cut tubes I have this tool which is really precise. So you essentially put your fuel tubing right here and that blade just cuts it perfectly just like that. So line it up and you get very clean cuts out of that. So these are separated and I'm just gonna look at the first tank. And let's see what we find or don't find. Okay, so uh, the, the tank is out, uh, the pipe and clunk are out. And what you can see here is that there's no tie wrapping on there, the barbs. So even though it should not come out, I'm just gonna go ahead and safety wrap that and same with the vent, and same with the top here. Um, but otherwise, the the rubber seal, as you can see here, it's really pushing on the on the neck of the tank. So I think it should be fine. I'm not sure why they put the zip ties there. This plastic is really stiff. I'm not convinced that the zip tie can actually help with that, but maybe it does. Anyway, so I'm gonna tie wrap, wire wrap this and then we'll stick it back in and move on. Um, the wire wrapping is done and what I like to point out if you're new to the channel is when you have barbs like this you actually want to put the wire around the barb and then cinch it down and what that does is as you can see here it really ensures that that tube cannot pull out so so that's done and then I just get two rounds around the barb and twist that with pliers or whatever and then neatly tuck it away. Uh, in the other areas where we have no barb, um, if you want you could go on and add solder and create barbs because this is just brass it should take solder pretty well but I'm not gonna be that anal right now I'm just gonna wire wrap it just like that on both the uh, the clunk the pickup and the vent and then we're gonna call we're gonna call that done so Everything is wire wrapped. We're gonna repeat that on the second tank. We're gonna worry about these guys after. Once we know where we're gonna put things in the jet and how long and whatnot. But inside the tanks, as far as we're concerned, that's done. Um, one thing I'd like to mention here is that this is, given this is a rectangular tank, some people would want to cut this and put a little uh, brass stint in here just to make sure that this can't coil on itself. That's fine. Um, I'm pretty happy with the flexibility of this this uh, line. It's not too flexible, and it feels like it's not gonna easily coil on itself. So I'm gonna leave it. Then, be. Final note is, if you notice, this is the vent. It needs to go to the top of the tank, and you can see that it's been cut 
in a very interesting shape. That's to make sure that it can't like, you know, seal itself against the top of the tank. But the point I'm trying to make is that whereas the clunk just goes in, you gotta make sure that this vent goes into the tank pointing up. Because the idea is when the tank fills, then the excess fluid drains through through that pipe. So we're gonna install this and make sure that uh, that vent points vertically as vertically as possible. And I, I, I can see with the light, I have a light that's pointing down at this. And you wanna look and see that your actual vent line comes all the way to the top of the tank. So in my case, uh, I can shine a light onto here and I see a little blue showing up at the top. So I know I've got my vent line correctly positioned. And so what I'm gonna do is now tighten this down. And when you tighten this down, there's another piece of metal on the other side as I showed earlier when I took off the internals. And that cinches this rubber gasket here and causes it to expand until it seals. Um, on the neck of, of the tank there. So we'll do it and make sure that it's nice and tight. Don't over tighten every, anything of course, but you wanna make sure it's nice and tight. And we're gonna call this done. We're gonna repeat that procedure on the second tank and we'll be done with the internals of the tank. Okay, so I've tightened everything down. Last thing I'm gonna do is label um, uh, pickup and then vent. And this way, when I go to, uh, you know, install my tank, I don't get it confused because that would be really bad. So this is my vent line. This is my pickup line. Um, and that way I have both pickup lines wired together and both vent lines wired together. So this way, this is the uh, pickup that goes to the UAT and this is the um, vent that goes to the outside of the aircraft. All right, so I'm back uh, on the F-15 and looking at the wiring and plumbing. And I will note here that I decided to go back to a series uh, plumbing. So essentially we have the pickup from this tank going to the vent of the second tank. And then the pickup of the second tank, which is this guy's gonna go to the UAT. And the vent from the first tank is gonna go out. And the reason I decided to go back to this was because, like I said, tanks are pretty close to each other. But also, if you think about air in the tanks, if you have the parallel set up, um, if one tank runs out before the other, then you're going to get air in your UAT. There's a good chance. With the series plumbing, that's uh, minimized because basically you have a second UAT-like tank, which is your second tank. So this is like a buffer. Um, and so all the fluid from this goes into here and then from here to the UAT so less chance of getting air bubbles and since they're so close together it really doesn't matter um, that they're plumbed in series so that's what I'll go with um, so a lot of people don't like to use the disconnects because I guess it's a chance of leakage um, I like these just because it makes it easier for me to service and I haven't actually seen knock on wood um, leaks through these Festo connectors. They're pretty good as long as they're properly like secured. So.